tuned into Breaking the Mask of Depression with your host, Diva with Depression. Hello, welcome to Breaking the Mask. I am your host, Diva with Depression, and I hope everybody is doing well today. We are still in our, how can I put it? Our family time. Um, my beautiful daughters gave me permission to put their business out in the street. So last episode, you heard my interview with my oldest daughter. And tonight I have my baby girl. So please welcome my Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing good. Everybody, my daughter, my baby is, lives in another state. So um, I have to check in with her before. Maybe. So are you ready to get started? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And I get a lot of questions about, um, number one, what it's like living with a mental illness. But a lot of people come to me and ask me about my children and their mental illness and how I parent children with mental illness. So I decided that, you know, last week when we talked to your sister, she gave us some insight into, you know, her, her frame of mind, you know, at the time that her depression started. And, and so I think that that's where I want to go today. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. At what age did you recognize that something might be wrong? I would say that it was pretty early on. I would say that I think at about 10 years old is when I knew that I had, not that necessarily, I didn't necessarily know what depression and anxiety were, but I did know that I felt things a lot differently than other people. 10 I mean, you know, that's, I'm glad that you said 10 years old because some people don't recognize that you can start that early. But I believe that as long as you um, are alert and you are functioning and you're, you know, depression, part of it is environmental. So your environment can, can cause depression at any age. So what, what symptoms did you notice? What made you say, you know, something might be off you know, my feelings might be off or, or I'm not, my mood might be off. <clears throat> well, in general, I just felt things a lot differently than other kids. I was affected by things a lot more, things that other kids could kind of get over really quickly. I wasn't able to. Mm -hmm. And also my mood would just kind of plummet out of nowhere um, in ways that a lot of people around me weren't experiencing that. Um, yeah, I think that's what I mainly noticed. Did, how did this affect your friendships at that age? Well, it was hard because, um, you know, sometimes you'll just have bad mental health days. And when you're a little bit older, like, you know, a teenager or an adult, people can kind of understand that. But when you're a kid, um, like, I, I didn't know what was going on with myself, and neither did my friends. And so it just kind of led to a lot of misunderstandings. Um, it led to sometimes a little bit of fights and things like that between mm -hmm. friends. Um, so it was definitely hard to cope with. So do you think that, well, you and your sister are seven years apart. Were, did you notice any similar, similarities? between what you were going through and what she was going through? Um, yeah, definitely. I think like, I think in the moment, no. But I think that looking back in hindsight, um, I realized that, um, you know, the things that she kind of was going through, like a lot of the things that would happen like in her episodes or her seasons of sadness, like, I kind of had those two, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and a lot of like the falling outs with friends and things like that. Like I could, that 
sometimes would happen like I could I saw a lot of myself in that Mm -hmm. so I know that you you said that at 10 years old you don't recognize what you're going through or how to verbalize it what age did you become aware of what you were going like something that what what age were you able to put a name to what you were going through um, I would say 14. Um, 14 is when I feel like I fully was like, I like, there's something wrong. Like I have depression or and I have anxiety. Um, that mm-hmm. was as soon as I entered high school. I think that was when I realized that, um, you know, because I was kind of able to ignore it. Um, right. I think I felt my first like episode of depression at 10 years old. But after that, like, I hadn't really felt that. Um, mm-hmm. And I, you know, I was I was really happy during those years. And then I think going to high school and being in a new environment really realized that, made me realize, like, what was going on um, and that I did have mental illness. Yeah. So by the time you were 14, we, we had been in New Jersey, right? About two years mm-hmm. at that time. And you were in a pretty intense um, high school program. Did you mm-hmm. do you think that that intensified it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that being in that kind of um, very intense and like competitive environment, um, it just kind of you know makes you feel bad about yourself naturally and also it makes you feel like there's a lot of expectation on yourself and when you don't meet it or when you do something wrong inevitably because you're 14 and you're young um it feels like there's no room for that kind of mistake yeah um and so it definitely made it a lot harder because I didn't feel like I had a good support system so what symptoms did you notice at 14 that you didn't notice at 10? Are there any differences or at 14, how were you able to say this is it? Was it um, what was it from watching me or watching your sister or did you discover on your own what you were going through? Um, I kind of discovered it on my own. I did a lot of like um, I'm a I'm a big fan of Google. I'm always on the internet. You and your sister, so did, yeah. <laughs> Google doctors. <laughs> so I just kind of Googled everything. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm experiencing, you know, like I don't have any pleasure or anything. I don't like feel like I want to do anything. Like I feel really like unmotivated and I kind of started to kind of put the pieces together through like reading things and online um kind of what I was going through Mm -hmm. so now did you start to share with anyone friends family teachers at 14 or you know 14 and on um I did talk with it with my friend about it with my friends a lot Um, Because my friends, a lot of my friends are going through really similar things. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Yeah, so I I mainly talked about it with my friends because I felt like I didn't want to worry the adults in my life. Um, I just didn't want to like kind of uh, like raise any concern or anything like that with the adults in my life. So I just talked to people that were my age. Now, you and your sister are extremely, extremely close. Um, You know, she's your second mother. Why did, and you know that she went through the same thing. So why did you hide it from her? I think that um, the reason why was because I, I, again, I just didn't want to worry my family um and I also felt like I had to I I felt like I had to keep up this image of being okay you know like I was like I just have to be the perfect you know daughter the perfect sister um and I have to just keep it together um it's I kind of 
made it so that I, I told myself it wasn't okay to feel these things and fall apart. And so um, I didn't share with my sister because I just knew that she'd be really worried about me. Um, and I didn't want to worry my family. I didn't want to put anything on them. Um, and yeah. You know, <clears throat> you you hear me say it all the time that um, the three of us are extremely close. And that's one of, one of the things that I, I'm very proud of, the fact that you guys are able to talk to me. But these are things that you didn't share with me. And, you know, especially in, I, I can see how you might've gotten away with it when we were still living here. But when we went in Jersey, like we were, our rooms were like right next to each other. Um, we were on top of each other. So how were you able to hide some of your more severe symptoms? How'd you hide them from me? Um, I just kind of, you know, what I remember of being in high school is I just, when things are really bad for me, I just kind of do what I often do now is just kind of isolate. So um, I would just kind of go in my room for hours and just stay there um, just to kind of avoid anyone asking me about how I was doing or how school was. Um, yeah, I just I just didn't talk about it. Um, and I just became really good at hiding it, I guess. I, I do remember noticing that, you know, that there were times when you would just come in and go to your room or, you know, if it was the weekends, you would stay in your room and you didn't want to talk about whatever was bothering you. But I don't think that, um, I, I think that you're like me at that age. I, I was that way quiet and kept to myself. So I think that I, again, you know, when you're a teenager, your parents automatically think that you're going through teen things and not something as serious as depression. So do you think that your family life in either location contributed to your depression? Um, and you can be honest, like I told your sister, <laughs> be honest. Um, I think when I was a kid, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, there were just a lot of things going on that kind of made it hard to be at home sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and, but as I got older, it wasn't really the case, like when we moved away. Um, but definitely as a kid, I definitely think that my, a lot of it was, you know, home life as well just because there was so much going on when we were living in North Carolina yeah now in eight, 2018 you graduated from high school and went away mm -hmm. to college which for everyone um is a big deal you know your first time away from home um your first time having to you know be a grown-up sort so to speak how did college life affect your depression um college was a lot because it's a lot of change at once and I as a person don't do well with change a lot of the time change can cause depressive episodes for me um and so I think what really was um, hard with college was going through all these changes but not having the same support system like mm -hmm. I had grown accustomed to all the friends that I had in high school all the you know support systems that I had back where I went back home and I just didn't have that in Boston um, and also I had I was so burned out from high school from being in that program that I couldn't even really enjoy college at that point. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't feel like a new beginning at all. It kind of just felt like I was dragging myself through the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, just I, I think even looking back now, it's really hard to like look at the positive things of college mm -hmm. um, because it just felt so <clears throat> difficult. You know, one of the things 
I remember when we went on the first tour, um, big tour at Emerson, and I had questions about their mental health, you know, their counselors, their, you know, programs. And, you know, they assured me that, you know, they do have counselors on staff and there would be somebody there to talk to you if you needed it. Did you ever take advantage of those? I did, yeah. Um, I actually had um, in on-campus um, like therapists that I was seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that was really helpful to me. Um, she ended up being the one that got me the help I needed um, like outside of um, her. Mm -hmm. And so I am very grateful for that. Um, I will say that with college, um, a lot of mental health resources are very limited because there's so many kids and there's not enough like psychologists or therapists. Um, and also you can't really have that many sessions. It's not like a regular thing. Right. Um, so it's kind of, it's, uh, it's something that I think all colleges, not just mine, could definitely work on um, having way more resources and just putting more money and more staffing into those. Because again, as I said, college is a, a big place of change and a lot of people don't do well with it. And I think more people would probably finish um, if it were, if there were more mental health resources and more accommodations. Yeah. I remember... <clears throat> us always talking about that and even now um, when I talk to people daily and there are so many parents that are calling to get help for their children that are in their first year of college or you know they, this is their first time away from home so I think that you know <clears throat> what you're saying what you're saying is is really helpful and, and I think we need to say it louder um, I, first of all I think you need mental health care at every stage you know, mm -hmm. at 10 years old, if you are feeling like you're, you know, even if you don't know that it's depression, you know that you're feeling different and you should have the option to talk to someone. I know when I was in elementary school, I had a psychologist, you know, that I went to once a week, but that was only because I, I wasn't verbal. I wasn't talking. Um, they should have that resource available just because, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, how did, how did you, okay, this is a twofold question. How did you deal with the depression and the anxiety while you were in high school? Mm -hmm. And then how did you deal with it your first, you know, through your first year of college? <clears throat> um, so with high school, I mainly just, um, uh, I just kind of talked about it with my friends and kind of leaned on my friends for a lot of support. Um, and that was kind of the best coping mechanism, the, the healthy coping mechanism that I had. Right. Um, I had a few unhealthy coping mechanisms um, in high school and in my, especially in my first year of college. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I am. Um, I just kind of lean, yeah, I just lean, both times I just leaned on my friends for support um, and tried to do things to take my mind off of it um, by going out with them and stuff like that. Did your, did your, the way you were feeling and did that affect your relationships with people in your, you know, in your circle at college or were they more understanding than say when you were in high school? Um. It definitely did affect my relationships with people in college because it was hard to make friends because I was so upset. Right. It was hard to keep them um, uh, because I wasn't as comfortable telling them when I was having like a bad mental health day or not. Mm -hmm. um, and my friends, like they really got me um, right. in, in um, high school and you know, when you're meeting new people, they're not going to get you in the same way quite yet. Right. So I, I get sort of why you didn't share things maybe at 10 or, you know, 14, 15, 
why didn't you share what you were going through with us when you were in college? Because, you know, that wasn't, that, that was, like you said, we weren't there with you physically. So what prevented you from using us as a support system and sharing what you were going through with us while you were away at college? Um, I guess it was just kind of another thing of wanting to keep face. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to give the impression at all that I wasn't having an amazing college experience. I didn't want, again, I didn't want anyone to worry. Um, and I, again, like just wanting to make it seem like I was having a really good time and doing mm -hmm. really well. Because I didn't even admit to myself that I wasn't having a good time and that this wasn't the best place for me to be. Right. Um, so it would be even harder to kind of admit that to someone else. Only very recently, like looking back at it in hindsight, have I been able to kind of realize that, you know, it wasn't the right time for me to be there. So say that... Um... Okay, we'll go backwards. You're in college, you're in your first year of college and you're going through depression and you do have to, to seek help. Um, what, we, what was, you know, maybe your, one, your first two steps that you did to get therapy or, or get there just, you know, just so people can, or, or people that age can understand what their options are. Um, so when I first got help um, in college, uh, my school, my campus had a mental health resource center. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first thing I did is I just went there um, and I basically just kind of talked with someone. They kind of do like a little bit of an intake session mm -hmm. kind of um, where they kind of just like get to know you and your story. Um, and then kind of assign you to a therapist from there. Okay. Um, so I would say that, you know, a good step to take would just be to first find out if there's that kind of resource center on your campus. Okay. Um, now, where are you in your journey with mental illness today? And if you, do you want to say your age? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I'm 22 now, um, and I would say in my mental health journey, I'm definitely still in recovery. Recovery definitely, you know, as they say, is like forever. Right. You're always going to be recovering. Um, I still struggle a lot, um, and but, you know, more than anything, I think at this point in my life, I have a sense of hope mm -hmm. about it that I didn't always have throughout my life. I always thought that, you know, I was going to feel like this forever, that I could never experience joy or happiness. Um, and now I don't feel that way. Um, I know that joy is possible. Um, it's just that, you know, it might be a different joy than other people experience, or I might have to work a little bit harder to keep it but I know that it's possible because I felt it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of where I am. I'm definitely struggling, but hopeful. That's all. That's, you're just the smartest. I like the way you put that, that you, you know that it's, it's a possibility, that joy is a possibility. My therapist and I had a conversation last week about happy. And I, I always said that I don't, I don't, I'm not searching for happy. I'm searching for peace. You know, because I don't think that with this illness, I will ever be happy. But if I can get a little bit of peace, then I'll be okay, you know, or I'll at least feel better. So I like the way you worded that, that you look, you know, you know, the joy is there and you have hope of attaining that. that that's wonderful. What are your, give me two of your positive coping me mechanisms that you use today. Um, well, now that I think that I've, you know, gotten to a better place for the mental health, um, I like journaling a lot now. Mm -hmm. um, journaling is a really good thing for me, um, just writing down the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I've even, you know, made it fun by like kind of putting like fun pictures and doing it on my iPad and things like that. But it doesn't feel like so serious. Um, sometimes having like a physical diary can feel like a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but just doing it on the phone whenever I feel it or in my iPad has been really helping me. Um, and also just um, like taking walks. Um mm-hmm. And things like that and just knowing how to take a minute for yourself and Mm -hmm. sometimes you just need a cool off minute um and now I think so the way that I really cope with being overwhelmed or being really depressed is now I can just say I need a minute I need to kind of walk away um and you can kind of just have that moment what would you tell a teenager, right, if you, right now, what would you tell them if they are feeling the way you felt at that age? What would, how would you tell them to cope or, you know, what would you say? What advice would you give? Um, My biggest advice would be that, well, first it gets better. It, it definitely gets better. Um, Things will never feel, nothing in my life has ever felt as bad as when I was a teenager. Um, And things will never feel like that again. Mm -hmm. Um, So the first thing is that it gets better. And the next thing that I would say is the sooner that you can get some kind of help, um, the better. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was so scared at that age to open up to the adults in my life about what I was going through but I think that if I could go back I would absolutely just tell someone what I was going through because you know the sooner you can start to feel better and get treatment Mm -hmm. um, the better you'll be in the long run Um, and just the sooner you can experience like happiness and joy Um, and so yeah just it's it's really difficult being vulnerable and mm-hmm. opening up about the way you it feel, yeah. but it almost always makes me feel better. Um, and I feel much worse when I keep it inside. Well, Lauren, I appreciate you um, helping your mommy out and coming on. It's like I said, I get so many questions about parenting children that are going, you know, that are struggling with mental illness. So I thank you for being open and honest and sharing your advice. I'm sure that it will help someone and you'll have to come back again. Okay, I will. Thank you everyone for listening. Please, please, please keep fighting. Stay well, stay healthy. Keep finding your peace and we will see you next time. 